Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Welcome to Open Heavens Devotional Review for today. Monday, the 8th of July, 2024. I'm Kane the Magic Kudum. Open Heavens is authored by Adadin the Lord Pastor E.A. Adeboye, the General Overseer of the Redeemed Christian Church of God. Open Heavens is a guide to a close fellowship with God. Let us pray. Father, we are grateful for another new week. We thank you for what you did for us in the course of last week. We we'll bless your holy name because we know that you will journey with us in this new week. As we learn from you today, Lord, Father, breathe upon your word. Indeed, let the entrance of your word give light. Let your word transform our lives and draw us closer to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Today we are looking at the law of harvest part 1. Our memory verse is taken from the book of Genesis 8 verse 22. While the earth remained seed time and harvest, and cold and heat, and summer and winter, and day and night shall not cease. Our Bible reading is from the book of Luke 6, 37 to 38. Judge not, and you shall not be judged. Condemn not, and you shall not be condemned. Forgive, and you shall be forgiven. Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, and shaken together, and running over, shall men give into your bosom. For with the same measure that he makes, whither I, whither it shall be measured to you again. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The message. The law of harvest is one of the strongest law that God placed on earth. It is so powerful that God himself will never break it. In Mark 14 verse 36, Jesus Christ prayed fervently sweating blood and praying that God should change the plan of salvation so that he wouldn't have to go to the cross to die for mankind. God said no. He said no because of the law of harvest. He had to sow his only son in order to reap many more children into his kingdom. Romans 8, 29, Hebrews 2, 10, 1 Corinthians 1, 5, 1 Corinthians 15 verse 20. The law of harvest states that whatever a man sows, he will reap. This is well captured in Galatians 6 verse 7. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Another beautiful thing about the law of harvest is that you will reap what you sow in greater proportions. Hosea 8 verse 7 Therefore, whenever you give an offering, or you give alms, or you are sowing a seed, whatever you have given will come back to you in multiple folds. This is a law that nothing can break. The law of harvest becomes much stronger when operated in two ways. The first is the law of first fruit while the second is the law of tithes. These two laws open the possibility of overflowing blessings. There are only two places in the Bible where God says that if you do something, he will bless you so much that there won't be enough room to take it. Proverbs 3, 9-10 and Malachi 3:10. These two passages shows us clearly the secret of overflowing blessings. Many times when people pray for overflowing blessings, God expects them to obey the law of first fruits and tithes so that they can receive the blessings they seek. Believers will stop struggling with their finances when they obey the divine law of harvest in their work, business, and in giving. The Almighty God Himself put the law of harvest in place and expect us to obey it. For example, when I was first told about tithing, it didn't make sense to me mathematically. But I obeyed. I wondered back then if 100% was not enough to take care of my needs, how can 90% be sufficient after taking out 10% as tithe? Thank God I decided to test the law of Titan, and to my surprise, I discovered it was true. 
Praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah. Our daddy in the Lord is starting a new series, which is the law of harvest. And it is the part one. And we are told that this law of harvest, the first thing about the law of harvest is that whatever a man sows, he will reap. As we saw in our memory verse and also in our Bible reading for today. Whatever a man sows, he will reap. And another thing about the law of harvest also is that when you are reaping, you will reap what you sow in greater proportion. So if you sow good, you can be rest assured that when you are reaping it, it is going to be in greater proportion. And if it is the other way around, it's also going to be in greater proportion. First, if you sow good, you can be rest assured that it is good you will get. And not only will you get the good, you will get it even even in higher dimension, more than you have sown. That is talking about that there will be return on that on that what um, on whatever it is that you have sown. Praise ye the Lord, Hallelujah! I was told that this law is one of the strongest law that God had. It is one of the strongest law that God placed on earth. That even God Himself. Is not it will it did not will not break this law, like our daddy illustrated that that was why he he went even when Jesus Christ that he was that he was going to sow into the earth so that he can reap much more, even when he cried and prayed and all that he refused he said no that he must sow Jesus to the world the Bible says for God so loved the world that he gave his only peace, begotten Son so he gave him sowed him. And so that they can reap much more fruit, which you and I, if you have given your life to Christ, we are a product. We are part of the children that God has reaped. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So we're told that if you want financial breakthroughs, if you want overflowing breakthrough, be it in your business, be it in your work, or be it in whatever it is that you have given. If you want it to be overflowing, you know, we've been established that when you sow, you will reap. And not only will you reap, you will even reap even in, in higher, in greater proportion. If you want this, the, this type of greater proportion to be an overflowing one, then it is important that you sow, the, you sow in these two ways. You know, so greater overflowing, um, overflowing, overflowing harvest will work in those two ways as we have been told that it you know this law of harvest becomes very strong in these two ways the first one is the law of the first fruit if you can give your first fruit just like the word of god has said then you can be rest assured that when you are reaping back you will get it back not just in not in greater proportion but in an overflowing proportion praise the lord hallelujah and also the book of Proverbs 3 verse 9 to 10 and Malachi 3 10 corroborates this. And also aside giving your first fruit, if you can give one tenth that as commanded by the Lord in Malachi 3 verse 10 to his household, you can be rest assured that you will get whatever it is that you have sown in an overflowing manner. And I pray for as many that are still struggling in obeying this, that the Lord will, will touch your heart. He will give you the grace to give. And as you sow your first fruit and your, and your tithe, you will reap even in greater dimensions in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. We could see the account of our daddy, the Lord, when he said he was struggling with this, when, you know, when, before he started giving his tithe. Because you can also look at it, especially in this age and time, that things are difficult. And you're like, how much am I really earning? It's not even enough to take me home. I will now still take 10% from it. But God wants you to, to test him, like he has said, that you should do it and see if you won't have it, that you will not even have enough room, you know, to occupy all the blessings that you have given unto, that you, to occupy all the blessings that he will give unto you. And like Adam in the Lord said, he said he obeyed. So, you know, in most times, the things of the Lord is mystery. Don't try to, you know, to use your logical sense to you know to analyze it and wait until it makes sense the miracles does not make sense 
There are a lot of things about, you know, talking about Jesus Christ coming. You know, that the mother did not, was not, you know, did not meet any man. And yet she gave birth to Jesus Christ. Logically, it might not make sense. But then it happened. So God wants you and I to walk with him in faith. The Bible says without faith, it is impossible to please God. So it might look human with human thinking. It might not make sense. It might even look like it is not um, a way that is not pleasant to me. It, isn't this looking like even wickedness? You know, but then why don't you trust God? Even as he will do it for, even as you obey him and he will give you overflowing blessings in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I pray that it, when it comes to this fresh fruit and tithing, the Lord will give you and I even deeper understanding and make it convenient for us. Make it easy. Give us the grace to sow freely. The way and the manner at which we sow too will determine how those blessings will flow. I pray for you in your businesses, in your finances, in every area of your life that will, as we obey this law of harvest by sowing, by also operating in the area of tight and fast food that we will reap bountifully in an overflowing measure in Jesus' name. Amen. The key point is you will reap what you sow in greater proportions. So since you know you will reap what you sow, what are you sowing? It is important that we sow good. If we are here to give your life to Christ, it will be difficult for you to reap, to sow good because the default thing that a man wants to do is wickedness. The Bible says that God said he regretted when he created man because the heart of man is desperately wicked. But if you want to align with the spirit of God, then you need to give your life to Christ and ask him to help you. If you are here to give your life, why don't you pray and say, Father, I want to sow good at all times so that I can reap good. Help me. I accept you as my Lord and personal Savior. Come into my heart and make my home my heart you are bold in Jesus' name. Congratulations if you have said that prayer. I, I, I pray for we bless the name of the Lord for you. I pray that the Lord will visit you, transform you, give you even deeper understanding of those new faith that you have come to. Perhaps you backslided and you just reconnected back to Christ. I pray that the enemy will not, the devil will not be able to snatch you again. You will remain in his household forever in Jesus' mighty name. So you are encouraged to go to a Bible believing church. To, to, to allow them to nurture you and make and you will grow in this new faith that you have found in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much for being part of the review for today. God bless you. Amen.